Hello and welcome to the third part of my Minimato real-time masking tutorial series. Today's topic will be how to make perspectively correct reflections or reflective surfaces. And to be honest, I don't even know how to start this tutorial because it's not just making a new kind of reflection, but it basically adds a whole new material to Minimato that you can use. In fact, the method I'll show you today has so much customizability that I even would go so far to say that we have two new types of reflections. The first type is the, what I like to call it, realistic reflection. That's what you've seen in my perspectively correct mirror showcase. And then there is another type which I like to call artistic reflection that lets you make rough reflections like these and even uh, something as anisotropic materials with uh, that basically imitates a brushed surface which doesn't make sense on a diamond but it's possible. As you can see on the sword here this reflection method actually also supports reflection maps because as you can see the blade itself is more reflective than other parts of the sword and this also again adds a lot more customizability to your reflective surfaces. As always don't forget to make sure that you've watched all the other parts of the tutorial series because I'm not gonna explain every aspect again and again because otherwise these tutorials are just gonna take too much time. So let's just cover the theory again. How should a perspectively correct reflection work? So very important for calculating reflections is the angle from which we are looking on the reflective surface. So if our camera is somewhere like here, then we expect our reflection to display something that is there. That's because of the angle from which we are looking on our reflective surface. And the way we are going to do that is by simply mirroring the camera motion and filming whatever is behind these reflective surfaces so that we can get the required information and then later stitch it together to an image where we actually can see our reflective surface. So as you can see now I deleted everything and just as for the portals we need a folder in which everything that will affect our mirror system will be parented to. One important thing when you're building such an reflection system is that all reflective surfaces have to be on the same coordinate, so they all have to be on one plane, so you cannot move them um, back or forth because otherwise the reflection is not going to be 100% perspectively correct anymore. If it's just a slight a slight change, it won't be noticeable, but um, if you're going for full perspective correctness, then you should not move them in uh, depth, because this will break the reflection, although it might not be visible with tiny changes, but keep that in mind. One thing I highly recommend you to do before you actually want to make your camera motion is that you should put this camera into a folder, and this folder should be at the exact same position where your reflective surfaces are going to be because we are later going to mirror our camera movement along and with the help of this folder so it is important that this folder is at the exact same position as the reflective surfaces so when you're done with your camera movement we can start making the mask so first of all we have to mirror our camera movement for that we can simply duplicate our folder with the camera and in my case this camera moves away from the surface along the x-axis. So what I simply have to do is go to my uh, duplicated camera folder and scale the x to minus 1. So what we did with that is that now both cameras move in sync but mirrored along the x-axis. Important is that to actually be able to use negative scale you have to allow unlimited values to be set, otherwise you cannot get this minus values. If you don't want to use this minus values you of course can mirror the camera movement by hand, but this is uh, quite annoying and I actually do not recommend this. So, but now we have a little problem, because we now have our mirrored camera movement, but if we actually go 
into this camera we see that we cannot get the information behind the surfaces because the surfaces itself are in front of the information we need. So this might not work every time. So what you might have to do is um, duplicate your whole scene, move it a little to the side and then scale your camera folder with minus one. And then what we have to do here is just delete all the items that are in our way. And now we get the information we need for the reflection. Of course we want to name our thing, so we probably want to name this something like mirror scene and our camera something like uh, mirror cam and then basically we have one more step to do which would be to make our actual mask scene so we are going to duplicate our first scene because here we still have our items move it to the side and as usual you just go to the color and make it 100% bright 100% white and tell it to not cast any shadows or stuff and then you also want to make sure that the rest of the scene is white just in case that you have any things in there. Also important is that you put this mask scene in a white cube so that you actually don't get any pixels that you don't want to be there. So just spawn in a cube, parent it to the scene scale it so that it is bigger than your scenery and also tell it to be 100% bright and not to cast shadow or SSA or, or anything else. And then the last thing that we want to do is select our three items and make them completely black. Then we of course want to name everything again so call this something like mask and this something like mask cam and then we again can start Compositing. For that we want to spawn in a new camera, call it something like mix color final and then what we need is a surface and as its texture we want to apply the uh, mirror cam and then we want to parent this surface to our mix color, color final camera. This surface definitely should has its rotation point in the center. Then you want to move the surface by 8 and you also want to set the field of view of our camera to 90. This surface should be 100% bright and not show back faces. In that case we probably will need to rotate it by 180 degrees. Then we also want this surface to fit our aspect ratio so this is 1 by 1.777777 for 16 by 9. What we also want to do is we want to go to the library, find our surface and tell it to mirror horizontally. This is important because we actually are building a mirror so we also have to mirror our information we get. We probably want to name this surface something like mirror. Then we'll actually have to spawn in another camera with the mask cam as a texture applied. Create this also parented to the mix color final and do the same game again. So this should not cast shadow SSL or fog. It should not show back faces, should be rotated by 180 degrees, should be 100% bright and its rotation point should be at zero. And it also should be uh, eight on the y-axis. So if you should get any z fighting then what you have to do is simply go one higher with the render depth and then this z fighting issue should be solved. Of course we also want this texture to fit our aspect ratio so we are going to scale by 1.77777 on the X axis. I just realized that I didn't move the surface to 8 but to 9. In that case just correct that, set it to 9 and everything should work just fine. Also make sure that also this surface does not cast any shadow SSAO or fog. So now the actual masking process starts. 
Well, we want to select our mask surface. We actually also want to call it mask and we want to tell it to subtract. Now what we'll get is the information we need to apply on top of our items in our main camera. What we want to do then is duplicate our mask, call it something like overlay and as texture apply the main camera. And we also have to set the blend mode to add. And what we get now is our perfectly working reflection. So as you can see, if you copied the camera movement um, the way you should, then this should work just fine. So now let's come to how these reflections are customizable. So they basically are two things that affect the strength of the reflection. First of all, the color of our three items. So if we actually were to make them 100% black, we would get a perfect mirror without any of the base color. Um, but if you want to keep the color and only make the reflection a little less strong then you also can go to the mask and make the three items you can see in the mask so these three uh, a little brighter and this will also make the reflection less stronger as you can see here so just play with that and then you'll probably find something that fits your needs. If you want to go a little more advanced, you can also use reflection maps. So for example, go to your sword in the camera mask and you could, for example, apply a custom reflection map you made. And in that case, you of course have to reduce the mix percent to zero so that we get the uh, mask itself. And then what you'll see is that now certain parts reflect more than others do. For that, it's important to know that this reflection map probably is inverted, so as darker the color, as more reflection will be on the final result. So you can see where we have this really bright pixels here, you almost have no reflection on uh, the sword in the final result. So this is how you can affect the strength of the reflection. So, but... But I promise to show you two new reflection models and the first is the physical reflection. The cool thing about the physical reflection is that you can even set your global depth of field to be in the reflection itself. So if you actually disable that and hit render, what you will see is that the focus of the depth of field is in the reflection itself, which is, I think, a really cool feature and also very realistic because that's the way light and blur in real life also works. To actually get this effect, it's important that all three cameras, meaning the main camera, the mirror camera and the mask camera, use the same depth of field values. And you actually have to imagine that this wall is pretty far away. So the distance between our camera and this wall here probably is something like 20 pixels, but you actually have to use the distance to the wall you can see in the reflection itself. But there actually is another reflection model and I like to call this autistic reflections. The only difference is that you now apply a few camera effects on the mirror cam. So, for example, if you reset the depth of field to zero and maybe not make it that strong, what you'll get is a rough reflection. Well, you probably want to readjust the depth of field for the other cameras. And then you'll get a result that looks something like this. Of course, you can make the effect stronger or less strong with changing the blur size of the depth of field so that the effect is not that strong. But if you actually combine this with film grain, it probably should not be that strong, maybe something like minus five and some simple color correction, maybe a little more contrast. Then what you'll see is that you get a pretty good imitation of an actual rough reflection. Of course this requires some fine tuning and tweaking but you can get some really decent results there. But there's even one more option you can use and that's the anamorphic ratio. 
and you can use that as some kind of approximation for an anisotropic surface. So what you'll see is that the reflection gets a little disturbed to the side that actually tries to imitate brushed metal. You probably want this effect to be a little stronger though, so you also should increase the blur size so that this makes sense. So as you can see, this method offers a lot of customizability, but there are a few things that you should make sure. First of all, um, during you animate you probably want to disable this folder because this takes hell a lot of computational cost. And the second thing, and this also applied to the portal mechanic, you always have to make sure that the camera that is filming your reflection has a free view to the information that it actually has to capture. So if there are any blocks in front here, then we won't get the information we actually want. So just make sure that the camera has enough space to move properly. And that's the only reason why I made this uh, schematic so big, just for the camera to have the place to move. And then again, if you have anything in front of these reflective surfaces, you have to make sure that they also are part of the mask. So if you, for example, have a Steve in front of these reflective surfaces, if you don't mask them properly, you of course want to make this visible again, then what you will see is that the reflection is applied on top of him and you actually don't want that. So duplicate your Steve and also paste him to the mask. And of course you have to make sure that he is a hundred percent white and then he will be masked properly. But to actually be able to see him in the reflections you also have to paste him to the mirror scene so that he also can be recorded and now he is part of the reflection system and can be seen in the reflections. And that's exactly what we want. And again, if you want to use any camera effects that affect the entire final result, then you should use them on the last camera, meaning on the mixed color final. So everything that is bloom, lens, dirt, color correction, film, grain or vignette should be on the last camera. And also make sure that all cameras are using the project size, since you probably don't mind a mate to be dying because you want to make your final result in 4K and have one FPS in Minimator because it has to calculate 4K images all the time. Then there's one last thing I forgot to mention in the portal tutorial. Before you actually render your animation, you want to make sure that all other cameras except of your final camera are not visible so that Minimator does not jump between any of the cameras because then you'll get some funny looking results and you probably don't want that. So just make them invisible so that the only visible camera is the mixed color final and then Minimator will use that camera. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you could learn something and we will see next time.